Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the 3D Print Zone. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade your Ender 3 V2 3D printer with an all-metal aluminum extruder to replace the stock plastic one that comes with your printer. Now this is actually part of a video series where I'm doing several upgrades to the printer, such as adding this flexible magnetic bed that you can see here. Now, if you're into 3D printing and upgrading your printer, then definitely check out some of my other videos. And at the end of the video, if you find any value in it, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the reason why you might want to upgrade to an all metal extruder. So the extruder is really important because its responsibility is to feed the filament, in this case, with an Ender 3 V2, it's going from your extruder to a Bowden tube and then to your hot end. And you want that feed rate to be nice and consistent so that you can get a good quality print. Now, the stock parts that come with the printer are made of plastic and therefore they can flex a little bit and over time they can wear down to the point where you're not getting a consistent stream of filament going through your printer. So swapping to metal parts is gonna make sure that you have nice rigid parts that aren't gonna flex. Another thing that people have seen is over time, the extruder will actually snap or break and then therefore you're kind of forced to replace it at that point. So in a way, this is somewhat of a preventative um, upgrade, but it's also gonna improve the quality of your prints overall. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through uh, this kit that I purchased on Amazon. And this is something that I'm gonna leave a link to in the description of the video. So if you're interested in purchasing one, then you can definitely check that out. So let's just open up the bag here so we can take a look. So we've got these two uh, red aluminum extruded parts, and this is gonna be our base and then our lever. Um, it also comes with a pneumatic fitting that would connect to the Bowden tube. In this case, we're not actually gonna use this because I'm gonna be upgrading the Bowden tube as well to a Capricorn one, but um, we'll just set that aside for now. And then let's see, if we open up this smaller bag. So you can see here we have a pin and that's what this arm is gonna rotate on. We have a spring, we have a gear, we have a bearing, and then we have a bunch of other just hardware. Now, one of the nice things is that all this hardware that you see here is just gonna be a direct replacement for the parts that we already have. So you can see we have a lever arm, our spring, our gear, our bearing, and our base plate. And everything here is just essentially gonna be directly swapped for what we already have. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by turning the 3D printer on. Now I'm gonna come over to prepare. We're gonna go ahead and preheat for PLA, just so that we have our nozzle heating up so we can remove the filament that's currently in the printer. Great, so now we can see that we're fully preheated the nozzle. And now we're gonna come over here. And what we're gonna do is snip this end of the filament, and then we're going to pull the filament out. That way we can then disassemble the existing extruder. And now that we have successfully heated up the nozzle, it's safe to press this down. And we're gonna pull out the filament that's currently inside. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and shut the printer off because we don't need it heated anymore. So the next step I'm gonna do is loosen up this uh, fitting right here, which is the Bowden tube pneumatic fitting. And to do that, I'm gonna use the wrench that comes with the printer. So it should have this guy. So let's set this back down and we're gonna just loosen this fitting so that we can take this off. And then now that I've used 
the wrench, I should be able to twist this off by hand. And there we go. Okay, so continuing the disassembly, I'm gonna be using the hex wrench. This is another one that comes with the 3D printer. And I'm going to loosen this screw right here. Okay. And I'm also gonna do the same thing for the screw right here, which is going through the pin. Okay. And I've just got that just loose enough to kind of free it up. And there we go. So now we can take this whole subassembly off. Now, if we come in with the slightly smaller hex wrench, we can get some of these other screws. So there's, I believe, three of them. There's a second one. And this is gonna allow us to take the base plate off. And then there's a third one right here. This one you could see has a flat head. Now you're gonna wanna hold the motor, right? Cause this is attaching directly to the motor, which is going to drop out just like that. So now let's take this off and you can see that the plate should come right off. Looks like there's a little bit of grease, so I'm just going to clean up this surface, remove any residue, and kind of just prepare it to put the new one on. So that seems good to me. Okay, so now we're basically going to repeat the exact same steps, but we're just going to do them in the reverse order and with the new hardware from the metal kit. So I'm just lining up the motor and the base plate, and we'll put a screw right in there, tighten it up. I'm just going a little bit loose there and then I'll tighten them all down at the end. And you can see this one has a flat head and that's just to make sure that the lever arm has enough clearance. It's not gonna run into the screw. Okay, so now that we're in position, I'm gonna tighten these down. Okay, awesome. So for the next step, it's actually easiest to do it as a subassembly. So you can see we have the lever arm here, and then here we have, um, it's an M4 by eight, I believe, screw. There's a lock washer that goes in between it, and then the bearing itself. And that is going to fit right here. And then we can take a hex wrench and tighten that down. Okay, so you want to make sure that that's tight and then it's a good time here to check and make sure that your bearing is able to spin freely. Then the last thing for the subassembly is you're just going to take the M3 by 10 screw and tighten it down all the way until you hit a stop. There we go. And that's going to act as kind of a retaining feature for the spring. Okay, so now we can go take this subassembly, and I've gone here and taken this screw, fed it through the pin, and then these are going to go through to connect our lever arm to the rest of the extruder, and then we're just going to tighten this down. Okay. Want to make sure one thing you want to make sure is that. You've tightened it down enough, but if you tighten it down too much, there is a possibility that this isn't going to be able to move. So you just want to make sure that this is, can freely move after you've installed it. Now that we've got that in place, we can go ahead and put the spring in. So you can kind of press it in, compress it so you go down. And then this is a M3 by 10 screw that we can go ahead and 
tighten into position to hold the spring in. Just like that. So one thing that I didn't mention in the beginning is it does come with a replacement gear. Um, my printer's pretty new and the gear that I have on there, the teeth aren't worn down or anything. Um, so I just decided to leave it as is. You can choose to replace it. So when you go to remount the motor, you can put the replacement gear on there. But for me, I'm planning to just use the gear that came with the printer. And then eventually in the future, if the gear teeth wear down and I'm having any issues with the filament skipping, then I'll go back and replace just the gear. So believe it or not, that's essentially it. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not going to be putting this fitting on right now because in my next video, I'm going to be replacing the Bowden tube with a Capricorn Bowden tube with some better fittings. Um, so definitely make sure to check that video out. But really the last thing you have to do is just install your, uh, your dial here and then you can feed filament back in and you're ready to go. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you found any value in it, then like and subscribe and definitely check out some of my other videos. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.